Hi there, it's Mario here and in this video I decided to cover the topic of recovery nutrition. In essence, you're going to learn what to eat and how to eat when you get injured. You might be wondering right now, well, I haven't been injured, I don't plan on getting injured, why should I care about this video, why is this relevant? Well, the fact is that if you've been in this game for a while, if you're watching this video, you kind of nodded a little bit right now and said, well, of course you're gonna get injured eventually, it's just a part of the journey. And that is true. I mean, if you look at the injury rates in terms of bodybuilding and physique sports, they are among the lowest possible compared to all the other sports where we're talking about sprinting or contact sports, but they still happen. They're part of the journey. I mean, looking at my own journey for the last six years, I had some issues with elbow tendonitis, I had some issues with the shoulder. I mean, it's kind of normal, you know, it's a part of the process. Luckily, I didn't have any severe injuries, but I still want to keep myself educated and that's something I wanted to make in this video is if that happens, you know, I want to know what I can do, you know, what can I do to maximize recovery? As well as, if you've been in this situation, you probably realize that there's not a lot of talk about nutrition, right? There's a lot of talk about physiotherapy, about things like that and general recovery and just let it heal. There's not a lot of talk about the actual nutrition recommendations and that's something I wanted to put out in this video based on a review paper from November 2015 by Kevin Tipton. I'm gonna link this review paper in the description below. For you guys that wanna learn more and you wanna dig into the paper and read all the references as well which are highly, highly relevant and they have a lot of great information there so I would highly recommend you check that out if you're interested in learning more. But I'm gonna break this down into very simple recommendations that will be broken down into three sections and the section number one will be about energy balance, so what do you do with your calories? Number two, what do you do with your macros? Number three, what do you do for supplements and what are some of the supplements that might actually help the process and what are some of the things that might actually worsen the process. So when we look at energy balance, this is the critical factor and most of us who are interested in physique goals and interested in getting abs and keeping abs, when we get injured, our first kind of instinct is to reduce calories, right? You're thinking, well, I'm not moving, so I need to reduce calories because I don't want to get fat, you know, I don't want to put on too much body fat and my energy expenditure just decrease because I'm not training, right? And that's actually not a good idea, right? If you get injured and if you, it's a severe injury, actually the energy expenditure for that, for the recovery process, might actually go up your energy expenditure by 15 to 50% because the healing process itself, the recovery requires energy, it requires calories. So actually cutting calories might result in slowing down the recovery process and making the whole process longer, which obviously is not a good idea if you're interested in getting back to your life and getting back to your training as fast as possible. So it's not a good idea to cut the calories, but what about going further with calories? Does that help at all, right? Well, the thing is that we think, well, we, if you just swing in the other direction, if you add more, maybe it's gonna speed up the process. That's kind of our logical thinking. Well, it's not the case. You know, if you add too many calories, what actually is gonna happen is gonna gain too much body fat, and you gain too much body fat, you screw your insulin sensitivity, which is also not a good idea when it comes to recovery process. So it's a really good idea to find the energy balance, to find the amount of calories that you can maintain your weight at. And that's the ultimate, idea here with the energy balance is to find that nice little equilibrium, you can use the help of a coach, you can find it yourself, you've been tracking your calories and your macros for a while and your body weight, you probably are aware of what could be the maintenance in a rough way and then you can kind of adjust it over time, but it's important not to undercut calories, but it's also very, very important not to overfeed yourself because it both can lead into negative outcomes. So now that we handle the calories, how do we separate those calories into macros? What do we do for those protein, fats, and carbs? Well, protein is the most important one. You know, as we are interested in physique sports, we always say protein is the king of macros. Well, it is in the case of recovery as well because your body needs the building blocks to repair, to recover. And one thing with the injury, of course, is the dealing with muscle loss. And muscle loss is inevitable. If you look at the studies, I mean, if you mobilize yourself and you will start losing muscle very, very fast within a matter of days. And that's something just to accept, of course, but there are certain things, I mean, specifically with protein intake that can help at least to reduce that muscle loss a little bit and help you recover faster. I mean, with the recommendations from the paper, there are between two and 2.5 
grams per kilo of protein. So you wanna go, let's say if you're someone who is about 80 kilos, you wanna go with about 160 grams of protein or about, let's say to 200 grams of protein. So if you provide this amount of protein, you will enhance a little bit of that um, recovery as well as you're gonna give yourself a building block so the body doesn't have to tap into the muscle as much. And one important factor here is that when you're injured, when you're in that recovery process, it's important to point out that the muscle protein synthesis response is not as high as when you're training. So this means that when you're giving yourself protein, uh, when you're serving protein throughout the day, I mean, servings, let's say three to four meals, you wanna make sure that you have enough protein per meal to basically get that spike of muscle protein synthesis. In normal conditions, it would be between 20 and 25 grams of high quality, leucine rich protein, but in this case it's even higher. So I would recommend going even above 30 grams, maybe to 40 grams per serving to ensure that you get that muscle protein synthesis response and that will also help you get a little bit of those extra benefits. So that's in terms of protein, in terms of actual food choices, like as I said, focus on high quality protein sources that are very rich in leucine, maximize the quality of your diet, at least when it comes to recovery process, can definitely help a lot. And when it comes to carbohydrates, for example, you wanna minimize the amount of processed carbohydrate that you're consuming and maximize the amount of unprocessed, you get basically getting most of your carbohydrates from fruits and vegetables, to also get as much nutrition as possible out of the food. When it comes to fats, I mean, most fats, it's a really good idea to have a balance between the monosaturated and polysaturated fats. So you basically, most of your fats should come from monosaturated fat. And when it comes to polysaturated, you wanna have a good balance between omega-3s and omega-6. Essentially, omega-6 is not a problem, but when it comes to omega-3, you wanna include some fish oil and some EPA, DHA into your diet. I mean, you don't wanna overdo that because there, there can also be a negative consequence there, but it is good to include some, let's say, fatty fish as your source of omega-3, as well as when you look at higher quality meats, such as ground, meats and organic and things like that maybe can be beneficial for your uh, end result. And when you're looking at further, I mean, into supplementation, omega-3 is actually one of the first things that pops up and in general recommendations for supplements when it comes to recovery. And there we wanna be careful. We don't wanna overdose omega-3, we don't wanna underdose as well. So it is really about finding the balance again and in general with the supplementation such as vitamins and minerals, you wanna make sure that there's no deficiencies. So going beyond having a sufficient amount doesn't seem to yield any benefits, but if you're underdosing certain things, if you're not getting enough calcium, for example, or not enough vitamin D, that can definitely influence the amount of uh, recovery that you're getting, especially when it comes to bones, but it comes into general health. If you're living in a place where you don't get enough sun exposure, and if you're, let's say, in your house, if you never see the sun, you know, the chances of you getting vitamin D are not very good. So you wanna make sure to provide enough of that from supplementation. And of course, you wanna do some blood work and test yourself to see if you're actually deficient in anything. And in supplements, what one that has shown some benefits is creatine monohydrate, once again, one of the most studied and well-known supplements for performance enhancing. In this case, might actually help with alleviating some of that muscle loss. So you might wanna consider including creatine monohydrate. And of course, all of these things you wanna consult with your physician before you include in your diet. But the most important factors, of course, are providing enough of energy balance. I mean, basically having that equilibrium of calories, not going too low or too high as well as making sure that there's no protein from your diet. Those are the biggest building blocks here. And then the supplementation is kind of there just to make sure that there's nothing missing in your diet. And those are the key points from this paper that you should be aware of and to know that to focus on when you're injured, that there are some things that you can do with your nutrition to ensure faster recovery and better recovery. So I hope you enjoyed a quick video here as well as all the links will be in the description below. If you have any com comments or questions on this topic, definitely leave them below. Aside from that, make sure to hit that subscribe button below to support the channel and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.